Hello ladies and fanboys. My name is Connor KXE, I'm also known as the Shift HD, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get better performance out of Battlefield 4. There are several things that you can do to get better performance, stability, and just general increases, basically. So there's going to be several things, like I say. One of them is involving going into the registry, so please follow exactly the, what I do in the video, otherwise we might come to a situation where it ends up going wrong. Like I say, we are going into the registry, don't worry, we won't be fucking up anything, it should be completely safe, however though, I do warn you, if you are on an air-cooled system, it may increase your temperatures, because it's basically enabling hyper-threading. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is actually updating the graphics drivers. You might, might yeah, you need to make sure that you've got the latest AMD or NVIDIA drivers, depending on your graphics card. I have a NVIDIA GTX 670, so I'm using the NVIDIA Game Ready 33165 drivers. It also includes from the GeForce Experience, so you can update on the fly, and it also comes along with Shadow Play, which enables you to record your footage in game without having a capture card so on and so forth and limited resources hog compared to either fraps or dx touring with amd you want to have catalyst uh, 13.8 10 or 11 i believe anyway though so you, that's the first thing update your drivers and make sure you're up to date with that the second thing that you can do is download microsoft.framework 4.5 if you are on Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 operating systems, it should already be installed. However, if you are on Windows 7, it's worth a look to see if you are updated. Otherwise, update. Because it gave me a little bit of uh, an increase with stability. So yeah, that's one thing that you can do. And another thing is CPU core parking. It's pretty damn simple to do. You need to go into the reg edit. So we need to go into the start file, uh, start there button and go reg edit. It comes on up. And then we are basically enabling the processors to work all at the same time rather than one processor uh, working less hard, basically. So if you've got a quad core, one processor working at 25% and the other ones are at 15, it will even them all out so they'll do like 20% load each or something or other. Um, so yeah, it, it basically enables your hyper threads. So yeah, you might want to make sure your overclock is a little bit lower. It shouldn't do anything, it hasn't really affected my temperatures, it's pretty much neg uh, neg negligible because I'm a water. But there you go. So what you want to do is you want to go over to your reg edit, and then you go over to computer or HK local machine, and then go in edit and then find. And you want to put in this number right over here in the reg edit, it is OCC5B647 blah blah blah, it will be in the description. So do not worry, it will be there for you with the steps of how to do this exactly. So you go to find next, you let the registry go and search at Shizzle, and it will find them. There are two values that we need to change, you do not need to change anything else, otherwise it may, it may do things that you don't exactly want to happen. There are only two that we need to change, but there are several values of them. Here they are now, it is value max and value minimum. Once again, value max and value minimum. If they are both at zero already, then hey presto, you are one of the lucky ones that hasn't got CPU core parking enabled. If you're on a laptop, this will most likely be the problem that you need to enable this. So basically to change it, you need to go to value max or value minimum, double click them and then enter zero and then click OK. Change nothing else, again with value min, zero, OK. Then go to edit and find next. There will be a fair few more. I have three on my PC altogether. So there's the others. So you need to change them to zero as well. And then find next once again. Finds the next ones. Once again at zero. Find next. And that should be the end of them. All done. All done dusted. That's it. From doing this, I went from going on Battlefield 4 low settings anywhere any you know frames per second were all over the place to ultra including anti-aliasing 60 frames per second or higher on i7 950 with a GTX 670 6 gigabyte of RAM so hey there's something to this the last thing you want to do though is go over to Battlefield 4 itself you want to go over to the open file location go into the underscore installer direct dex redis and scroll all the way down and go to DX Setup EXE. You want to run it as administrator, click next, 
and then next and let it do its stuff. I've already done this several times so I do not need to do so but literally just agree and click next and you will notice it starts to install. Once it installs it will say you know it is finished you'll notice that it starts installing DirectX 9 files and so on and so forth. It's stupid because DICE have apparently not included the DirectX files, or half of them at least. I'm not entirely sure if that's to cripple NVIDIA, but it's probably also done a little bit of damage to the AMD cards too. So make sure you're all up to date on everything. Just do it, do it, do it. <coughs> Pardon me. You can also create yourself a config file, but it, you don't always have to do it. To do so though, you have to click on uh, anywhere on the screen, pretty much in the folder, and then go to new, new text document, and then uh, open it up, put in your commands, go to file, save as, and then type user.config. And it should say, oh, you're gonna be changing the file extension. Make sure you click yes, and it will do so, and it will create it to this file, file, uh, file right here. So in my config file though, I have perf overlay draw fps one which is obviously the FPS counter, you can copy that, and this is also another command that everyone uses for pretty much every game engine. It basically tells your CPU how many, or GPU to CPU, how many frames it's going to render ahead before you see it yourself. You want to set that to zero, or one, it's entirely up to you really, just research yourself, go on Google and find other little commands that you might want to put in. You can turn off depth of field, motion blur, uh, force direct dex 9 or 10 and turn a few things off like shaders and also lower texture resolution or shadow resolution. Afterwards you just save, user.config, let it do its extension and then hey presto. These are the different things that I know that have improved my performance on Battlefield 4 dramatically. And let me reiterate that I was on Battlefield 4 low settings with 80% resolution scale on a GTX 670. 2GB version, bear in mind, but they're overclocked to 680 speeds. And I was getting very, very low frames per second, stuttering like mad, and then all of a sudden I do all this stuff and it's smooth as butter. 60 frames per second, ultra, all the anti-aliasing, blah, blah, blah. Every now and again, though, I do have to turn it down on different levels if it's on a different game mode, so on and so forth, to suit my needs. But basically this will help you increase frames per second on all games as long as you do the CPU core parking. Anyway though, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If it's helped you in any way or form, please give us a like and subscribe. I shall do more videos in the future that are relative to this or Battlefield 4 montages, so on and so forth. Anyway though, I hope you enjoyed this. Like I say, I shall see you all soon. Bye!